Today is the ITV News. The Prime Minister's pledges and his warning in his first full day in charge in number 10. Sir Keir Starmer confirmed the Conservatives' Rwanda plan was dead and buried and said prisons, just like the NHS, are broken. We're going to have to take the tough decisions and take them early, and we will. Um, we will do that with a raw honesty. We've just got to take our time. In the race to replace Rishi Sunak, the former Home Secretary, Suella Braverman, refuses to rule herself in or out. And... England expects in the Euro 2024 quarter-final clash against Switzerland. Sir Keir Starmer has hit the ground running on his first full day as Prime Minister, holding his first cabinet meeting and then a press conference laying out his plans for the immediate future. He'll start a tour of the UK nations tomorrow and warned tough decisions will be made early. He said both prisons and the NHS in England are broken, but that work to fix the NHS has already begun. And he confirmed the previous government's Rwanda migrants plan has been scrapped. Here's our political correspondent, Shihab Khan, on Sir Keir's first full day in charge. <laughs> <laughs> Unsurprisingly, they're in very good spirits. For Keir Starmer, this was his first time sitting in that chair. The first cabinet meeting as he outlined his plans and proposals for government. Now we hold our first cabinet meeting. So I welcome you to it. We have a huge amount of work to do. So now we get on with our work. And the first continued as he held a press conference in Downing Street as Prime Minister. A little bit of politics and a government that is about delivery, is about service. Self-interest is yesterday's politics. I want a politics and a country that works for you. For one of the specifics, he says the NHS is broken. Everybody who uses it and works in it knows that it is broken and we're not going to operate under the pretense or language that doesn't express the problem as it is because otherwise we won't be able to fix the problem as quickly as we need to. He wants to get waiting lists down and part of his plan involves sending out experts from hospitals in London and Leeds who set up schemes to work evenings and weekends to do that. There's also an acceptance that the prison system needs reform. We're going to have to deal with the problem we've got with prisons. There is no overnight solution to the problem. We've got too many prisoners, not enough prisons. That's a monumental failure of the last government. That is a failure of government. It's a failure of government to instruct the police not to arrest. Uh, this has not had enough attention, in my view, but it's what happened. Um, we will fix that, but we can't fix it overnight. He has appointed the CEO of Timpsons, who's well known for hiring former prisoners as prisons minister. But there are major challenges. Prisons are basically all, all now full. And so this is a, a crisis that has been really slow in coming. You can't build your way out of a, a prison crisis uh, in any kind of good time. And the Prime Minister was unequivocal about what happens to the Rwanda deportation scheme. The Rwanda scheme was dead and buried before it started. It's never been um, a deterrent. And I'm not prepared to continue with um, gimmicks that don't act as a deterrent. The former Home Secretary, who has long argued the policy is the only way of stopping the boats, was not impressed. Years of hard work, Acts of Parliament, millions of pounds been spent on a scheme which, had it been delivered properly, would have worked. Keir Starmer promised to hit the ground running. Thank you all very much indeed. And he's now outlined his plans and vision for the initial stages of his time in office. She had the vision there. What does the timetable look like for the Prime Minister over the coming days? Very, very busy. We heard from the Prime Minister today. He outlined exactly what he's going to do. First of all, he wants to go on a tour of the United Kingdom, meet with all the first ministers of the respective 
countries, I love in the fact that Labour have got a lot of seats in a lot of areas and really all of the nations, and so he wants to go and talk to them. He then said he wants to meet with all the Metro mayors as well, made a point of saying that it doesn't matter what party they represent, Labour or Tory, he will meet with them, he says there's no monopoly on ideas. And then, if that wasn't enough, he will have his first major international summit as Prime Minister, the NATO summit, which is taking place in the United Kingdom, where, sorry, in the United States, where he is representing the United Kingdom for the first time as Prime Minister. It is a very busy week for his first week. He is aware, and the Labour sources I've talked to say they are aware of the mandate they have been given here. It is a very big majority, and they will need to deliver to justify the mandate that they've got. Thank you, Tony Hayes. This is Dave. Thanks, Sheila. It's been more than 24 hours since Rishi Sunak announced he would stand down as Conservative leader following his election defeat, but it's fair to say that so far there's been no stampede of candidates to replace him. Lewis Warner is at Conservative headquarters in Westminster for us. Lewis, any potential candidates seem to be keeping their heads down at the moment? Yeah, nobody's fired the starting gun on this leadership race just yet. There's about 121 uh, Tory MPs. It's said about a handful of them are said to be weighing up their options. There are, of course, those on the right of the party who'd like to see it move more in that direction in chase of those uh, Reform UK voters. Uh, one of those is the uh, former Home Secretary, Suella Brugman, who we saw in the programme just a moment ago. Uh, she said just this week that Conservatives who attack Nigel Farage are like the patient berating the doctor for the illness, suggesting she wants to see uh, the party move in that direction. Today, though, to be fair, she was rather coy about her ambitions. Are you going to be the next Tory party no leader? announcements. We've just got to take our time and figure out what's happened. Are you up to the challenge? I'm sure it'll be quite a difficult job. It's been a really bad result. There's no two ways about it. Hundreds of excellent Tory MPs have um, been kicked out of office. So what about those on the other side of the party? Well, the man who was until yesterday Chancellor of the Exchequer, Jeremy Hunt, today reportedly ruled himself out of this race. It's a race he knows a lot about, having uh, run in it and failed twice. Uh, the others in this race who are considering it, and maybe really thinking about whether they want to get into what can be at times a brutal battle of ideas, really uh, leading divisions. Uh, when will this all happen? Well, uh, party grandees are expected to meet uh, next week to decide on the process. In the meantime, Rishi Sunak, remember him, uh, says he'll remain in position until the process for selecting his successor is decided. Okay, Lewis Warner at Conservative Party HQ, thank you. In other news, President Biden has said he is mentally and physically fit enough to serve another term at the White House. During a primetime interview on American television, Mr. Biden addressed concerns about his health after his performance against Republican rival Donald Trump in a debate last week, which was criticized, saying only God could convince him to withdraw his bid for re-election. It's bad, so uh, no one to keep any serious condition. I was exhausted. I just listen to my instincts in terms of preparing and, and the bad night. I have a cognitive test every single day. Every day I have that test. Everything I do. You know, not only am I campaigning, but I'm running the world. If the Lord Almighty came out and said, Joe, get out of the race, I get out of the race, the Lord Almighty's not coming down. Crunch time for England in the Euros. They're playing Switzerland for a place in the semi-finals. England are playing significantly better than previously. Charlie Frost has more on the big build-up and the hopes and expectations of millions. It was a spark from Jude Bellingham's right foot that got England here. The three lines living to see the quarter-finals after a tournament of below expectation performances. Inside the Dusseldorf Arena, with royalty watching on, Gareth Southgate sent out a switched up squad formation, hoping the mid tournament tactical change would help England find their feet. But it was Switzerland that saw more of the ball in the opening exchanges. Before this run by Saka, so far England's main threat. But Harry Kane couldn't get there. 20 minutes in and no attempts on target. Then as it edged towards the break, Saka teed up Kobe Mainu on the edge of the box. But a goal-saving challenge from the Swiss captain kept the score even at half-time. 
England started back looking dominant, wanting to get a goal out of the possession they'd had in the first half, but it stayed cagey. Until this chance from Switzerland's Mbolo. While Desre Konza, in his first competitive start for the three lines, took the wind out of it, making sure it didn't find the back of the net. Better by England so far, but still room for improvement. Charlie Frost, ITV News. And in the last few minutes, both Switzerland and England have scored. Switzerland's Real Mbolo not falling from close range in the 74th minute. And five minutes later, a strike from England's Bukaya Saka brought the score level again. So the latest score with just a few minutes left to play is England 1, Switzerland 1. And Amy Lewis has been following the action with fans in Croydon in South London. Amy, what's the mood there?